Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on my review of Left You Dead by Peter James. So this is one of the Roy Grace novels. As always, I'm going to read the uh, blurb for you here, then I'm going to go through and check out my tabs and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. Uh, this series... You can either read, you can read it in order and you're going to get more from it. It's like a crime series based on, uh, follows the adventures of Roy Grace, a police officer working in Brighton. You can read it in order and you'll get the most out of it, but you can also just dip in and out at random. Basically, each book is its own case, but then there's sort of stuff happening in the coppers' private lives alongside it. So that's worth thinking about. Um, you will get slightly more if you read them in order. I'm going to read you the blurb, so let's get started. Dane reads... A Detective Superintendent Roy Grace novel. Niall and Eden Paternoster to start their Sunday the same way they always do, with a drive, a visit to a country house, and a quick stop at the local supermarket on the way home. But this Sunday ends differently, because while Niall waits and waits in the car park for Eden to pick up supplies, she never returns. She's not waiting for him at home, and none of their family or friends have heard from her. With Eden gone without a trace, Niall is arrested on suspicion of her murder. When Roy Grace is called in to investigate, it doesn't take long to realise that nothing is quite as it seems, and this might be his most mysterious case yet. Grace goes to see one of his old colleagues, uh, Guy, who um, Guy Batchelor, who's like disgraced by this point, which again is another reason why you kind of want to read them in order, because if you, if you read this one and then you go back to previous books, you'll be like, why is Guy working as a copper now, you know? Um, but yeah, Grace goes to see him in prison and we get Police officers rarely felt comfortable during prison visits, knowing that if they were unlucky enough to be there when a riot happened to kick off, they'd be the first target for the inmates. It didn't matter how you dress. You could be as casual as you liked. Your job was ingrained in your skin as potently as cheap aftershave. Most cons could smell you a mile away. Copper, scum, pigs, filth. And uh, Grace's son Bruno, who's Germany, names these chickens uh, Fraulein Andrea and Fraulein Julia. And we get this little exchange between Grace and his colleague uh, Branson. Farmer Grace, he shook his head smiling. I can just see you rocking up to the next murder investigation in Green Wellies, chewing on a piece of straw. And what if I do? Which do you think came first, the chicken or the egg? Grace asked. The rooster, obviously. Typical male. Very nice. So we get a reference to a quote from the author Chuck Paul in it, great author, about how it's hard to forget pain, but harder to remember happiness because we don't have scars for happiness. And Grace says, you know what surprises me the most about human behaviour? It's that the older I get, the less anything surprises me. When I first joined the force, I met so many old sweats who were such cynical bastards as my dad was. I vowed never to become like them, that I would always keep my faith in human decency. But that gets harder with every passing year. I'm turning into my dad. Um, and then Polly says, my dad had an expression. He used to say it often after a particularly trying day. Which was? Don't make excuses for shitty people. You can't put a flower in an asshole and call it a vase. And then we get uh, this little bit. Know about the Peter Principle, Aldridge asked her with a grim. She frowned. The what? Some guy back in the 1960s or 70s came up with a theory that sooner or later in any hierarchy, people get promoted to the level of their incompetence. Um, and I've heard of that, but weirdly I've been review, re editing my review of, I think, Find You Dead, another Roy Grace novel. And he talked about the exact same thing in that. And we get a reference to ABC, the mantra from the murder manual replaying in his head as it did so often when confronting a potential crime scene. Assume nothing, believe no one, check everything. And if you get the choice between um, hitting a wall or hitting a tree, um, it's best to always hit a wall because that will collapse. But if you hit a tree, what that does is absorb the impact and then give it all straight back to you. So go for the, go for the wall. And Grace says, seems to me it doesn't matter what you eat, vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian or carnivore, you're going to ingest chemicals that are crap for you. And that is very true, but you ingest fewer chemicals that are crap for you if you're vegan. Team vegan. So uh, one of uh, Grace's favourite quotes is an Einstein quote. Two things are infinite, the universe and human stupidity, and I'm not sure about the universe. And we get this little bit. Andrew, you know the problem with making anything idiot-proof? It's that idiots have a great deal of ingenuity. And I thought this was called the Platinum 10 Minutes and the Golden Hour. Uh, so the golden hour was that fir crucial first hour during which a severe trauma patient arrived in a hospital when the team threw every resource they had at them to understand the extent of their injuries and do all they could to keep them alive. Because if they could get them through that hour then they had an increased chance of saving them. The platinum 10 minutes was all down to him and the paramedic, so long as the victim wasn't trapped. If he assessed they needed urgent hospitalisation, their task would be to stabilise them and to ensure they move them safely, then get them off the scene and into the helicopter within 10 minutes, to give the victim as much of the golden hour as possible in hospital. Uh, and Grace's son gets hit by a car. 
And uh, his prognosis isn't great. Burton says, Because of his ruptured spleen and his dropped blood pressure, there's been a further insult to his brain, what we call a secondary brain injury, hypoxia. The team are doing all they can to try to get Bruno's numbers right and to ex extubate and stabilise him, and hopefully limit the hypoxia. He's been given three sets of drugs, ketamine to sedate him, rocuronium, a paralysing agent, and alfantanil, an analgesic. Not that it does him much good. We'll get another great quote. Success isn't about wanting what you don't have, it's wanting what you do have. And they're using what three words to give them like a precise location, which is very cool. I've seen people use that at festivals to um, kind of create a location for their tent so they can find it again. I only meet someone called Connell Bartlett, who is Graham Bartlett's son. And Peter James has actually written a book with Graham Bartlett. He's a real ex-cop. And um, they, re they reference Catch-22. Um, and we get, is it good? Brilliant, a classic. I read that its author, Joseph Heller, was at a party in New York thrown by some billionaire for a bunch of writers. Someone asked him how it made him feel that no matter how successful he was as an author, he would never make the kind of money his host did. Know what Heller replied? Polly shook her head. He said, I have something he will never have, and that's the knowledge that I have enough. Let me just get a, re a reference to Branson munching a vegan wrap, which I could eat, and so now I'm hungry. So yeah, Left You Dead by Peter James. Pretty good read. Uh, I didn't figure out the mystery, but then in a lot of these I don't really try to, so I'm more there for the journey rather than the overall destination at the end. But as I say, I did enjoy reading it. I would recommend it if you're a fan of like crime and police procedurals in particular, or if you've just been reading this series in general. I gave it a 4 out of 5. So yeah, but that's what I made of Left You Dead by Peter James. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you've read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.